Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're going to be diving back into the world of visual effects and recreating Ant-Man's incredible shrinking superpower. We'll be utilizing the Niagara system and timelines and the blueprints to make this effect not only functional, but visually appealing. Before we begin, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on future episodes. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, to begin with, we want to be able to see our effect um, as this takes place. So I'm going to start with the Niagara system. So I'm going to right click, hit Niagara system. Uh, next, and I'm just going to do an empty system. I'm going to finish, and then I want to just call this uh, NS shrink. Then we'll go ahead and open that up. So for this, we're going to do a real simple um, effect here just to get it to show up whenever we actually make the transition. I'm just going to rename this Mesh Glow. And what we want is just to be able to kind of see the outline of the, the mesh um, where the character was before he shrank, uh, shrank or grew. So um, to do that, I'm going to start with on my emitter state, I just want to say self. My loop behavior, I want to do once. And I'm going to set this. I think that's good there. For this, I'm going to do a, a spawn burst instantaneous. And I'm just going to give this a number. We can always change this if we want to see uh, more or less later. But I'm just going to do 5,000 for now. On my initialized particle, I'm going to set the life, do a direct set for half a second. Uh, we can leave the rest of these how they are. Again, this is just going to be real simple. And we don't want this just appearing out here. We want it to appear on the mesh. So I'm going to do an initialize mesh reproduction sprite. We need to give this a skeletal mesh to attach to. So I'm going to come down on this little drop down arrow and I want to turn this into a, a user parameter. That way I'm going to set this in a couple spots. So having one that we can just drag and drop um, will be good. The skeletal mesh I'm using is this Quinn simple. Uh, just make sure you set that to the mesh that you're using. And if you get the CPU access error, make sure you hit fix now on that. Uh, should be able to leave these how they are for now. The next thing I want to do is in the, let's see. We're starting to see our character here. I also want to do in the particle spawn, I want to do an update mesh reproduction sprite and then drag your skeletal mesh over here. And I'm just gonna leave this how it is for now. Down in the particle update, I'm going to just give this a scale color. And I just want this to fade over time. So on my alpha, I'm gonna do the drop down, and I'm going to do a float from curve. And I th think this is where I want to leave it, uh, just like this, so it just kind of fades out after a while. And that's going to be all that we need to do in this system. So now we're going to jump over to our third person uh, blueprint, or whichever blueprint that you're going to use this in. And to start with, uh, let's jump over into the construction script here. And what we want to do here is when this uh, this actor uh, starts up or begins in the game, we want to set its original position so that we can refer to it later. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get, say, get actor transform. 
uh, this is a reference to itself and I want to split this. We can either do this or we can actually also do um, get actor scale since that's the only thing that we're going to be changing for this. And I'm going to come off this and I'm going to promote to variable. And I'm going to name this variable original uh, scale. And then we're just going to set that. So when this game starts, or when this player is first created in the game, it will set his original scale. Next, we're going to go over to the event graph. To begin with, I'm going to give ourselves a way to use this. Um, and instead of setting up an input, I'm actually going to keep this real simple. And I want to just do a keyboard event. And you can make this whatever you want. I'm going to make it um, E for now, it, since it's right next to my um, up and down arrows, make it easy to get to. And what we're going to do in here is we want to, when this is pressed, we want to check the player's current size. If it's the same as its original size, we want it to shrink. If it's not the same as its original size, we want it to grow back to its original size. So I'm going to say get actor scale again. And from here, I'm going to do an equals. And I'm going to check if this is equal to the original scale. So I'm going to grab original scale and plug it in here. Uh, we're going to have one issue later, and this tolerance here will solve it. But for now, I'm going to leave that at zero so that we can see what the issue is. And off here, we're going to do a branch. We're going to need one more variable uh, that we need to set here. So I'm going to come down to my variables and I'm going to create one. I'm just going to call this a uh, new size. And this is a vector. And go ahead and pull that out here and say set new size. And we're going to do this a couple times. So I'm going to go ahead and connect one to my false as well. So if the actor is the same size as the scale, then we want him to shrink. And to do that, we're going to grab our original scale again, say get original scale, and come off of this, and I'm going to say divide. And off of this, I just want to do a, uh, vector or a float to vector because I'm going to scale it all equally. So I can just use one vector to control all three of the uh, vector parameters. And we're going to connect that. And in here, you can actually set this to whatever scale you want it to grow to um, or shrink to, excuse me. I want to shrink it maybe uh, by three and we can play with that to see what's different. And the other condition for a false, if the actor is not equal to its original scale, we want to set it back to its original scale. So we're just simply going to drag our original scale into this one so that if it's small, it'll go back to normal. From here, these are both going to tie into a timeline. So I'm going to say, uh, timeline right here. I'm going to connect both of these to play from start. And inside of my timeline, if we double click um, our timeline, we're going to add a track, a float track. For the length of this, I'm only going to set this to half a second. So 0 0.5. And then down here in the track, I'm going to right click and add a key. The first one is going to be zero, zero. And then the next one, right click add a key, is going to be at 
the half a second, we're going to be at one. That's all we need to do in the timeline. So we can go ahead and uh, save that. From here, we actually want to activate that Niagara system that we just created here, the NS shrink. So I'm going to go over to my mesh. I'm going to add a Niagara particle system. And then with Niagara highlighted, I'm going to go to the details panel, Niagara system asset. Let's set that to our shrink effects. And then the first thing we do, we need to do while this timeline is going is we want to activate that uh, Niagara system. Uh, while your Niagara system is highlighted back in your details panel, let's go ahead and turn auto activate off so that we don't see it immediately. And I'm going to drag my Niagara system out. And off of this, I want to say set active. And this is going to come off of the update pin. And then here I want to set new active and reset. After we activate this, we'll see it on our player, and then we need to actually shrink the player. So to do that, I'm going to get a, a alert vector. And we want to alert between the actor's current scale and his new scale. And our uh, this new track off of your timeline is going to be your alpha. So as time, time passes, it's going to go from 0 to 1 in little increments along the way, moving this from point A to point B. Uh, for point A, this is going to be where our actor is currently scaled to. So I'm going to say get actor scale. And I'm going to just plug that in right there. And then we want to lerp this to the new size so i can just grab new size from my variables and plug it in right there and then this is going to be our new value as time goes so i'm going to come over here and say set actor scale add this to the loop it's targeting itself and then this is our new value here And that should be all we need to do. So let's go ahead and play this. If I can catch the screen. There we go. So when I press E, I should shrink, and I do and then I should be able to grow. If I stand still and press this, so I'm not having the same issue I was having, okay, so we won't need to mess with the tolerance. Um, I was having an issue in my um, reference. I think it was because I was using a set actor transform instead of this, so something about um, standing still and shrinking was not allowing my player to um, do the opposite. So if it shrank or if it shrank and then grew, it wouldn't shrink again. And to fix that, if that does happen to you, you would change this to something like a 0 0.1. Uh, we don't need to do it for this. It's working just fine. Uh, but if we change that to 0 0.1, everything's still fine. And then some things we can do to make this effect better. Maybe you don't want as long of a trail there. So you can come over to uh, your Niagara system and you can make these die off a lot faster. Another thing that we can do is maybe in your scale color, Uh, you can change this, your scale curve, maybe if you want it to be half to begin with. Uh, 
uh, we can also do on the the number that we're uh, spawning, we can take that down. Maybe you just don't want very many at all. And just a little bit happening here. So this is just a fun little thing you can do for your game. Maybe you just want the ability to shrink down and fit into some small areas and then get big again, recreate an entire Ant-Man game um, just from this. So pretty fun to play around with, uh, highly customizable. You can do a lot of things with this, uh, including changing a lot of the visual effects in the Niagara system to look like you want it. Before we uh stop actually we could actually give this the giant man ability as well and to do that i'm not going to uh, do it but we could uh do another off of this if if they're not equal to the original size or if they are whichever way we could actually just uh add another node here where we could do some sort of check and if we want it to grow instead or maybe we do if we press um yeah let me let me do this real quick maybe if i press let's copy this and say we press three instead uh maybe we want this to grow instead so i could do uh let me move this down to give yourself some room here and i want to steal this bit here I'm gonna copy that, paste it. Instead of divide, I'm going to multiply by that same factor here. Uh, plug that in. And this is if we press three, then it's gonna do the same thing. So let's plug that right there as well. And then let's see what that looks like. So if I press E, I still shrink, I still grow. And now if I press three, I get even bigger. So you can be giant man as well. And then you can press E to shrink back to normal size and E again to. So kind of some fun ways to customize this as well. You can go all the way from small to big. So pretty fun to play around with. But that's going to do it for this episode. In this episode, we successfully created this fantastic shrinking effect inspired by Ant-Man superpowers using Unreal Engine blueprints and the Niagara system and timelines inside of the blueprints. So now you can implement this into your game or your project and allow players to access smaller areas or even areas now that you might need to be bigger in since we created the giant man effect. If you found this tutorial helpful, please make sure to hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Also, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn notifications on so you don't miss any future episodes. I really appreciate all of the support. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.